What's up everyone? Today's video is a hands-on, super powerful coaching based video. It's on the three shot combination. Now, if you haven't checked out my one, two punch combo video in the past, check it out. I'm going to link to it over here. This is the one, two punch, but it is the entire version of the one, two punch. Now, as always, if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. If in fact you do like it and leave a comment about what you think of the content in this video, as well as the impact of some of these coaching tips when you actually go and practice it yourself. So let's get started. First things first, what is the three shot combination? So the three shot combination is essentially the idea that you step one, hit deep and tight. Step two, after you've pushed your opponent in the back, you push up to the T for the volley. Step three, you can take the ball in short if it's loose. Step four, once you've taken the ball in short and your opponent is kind of squeezed under pressure in the front, you are again hunting the volley. Oftentimes when you take someone short, they hit a weak cross court, so you're hunting that weak cross. Step five, you are hitting into the open space. Now one really, really critical thing that I'd encourage you guys to think about, and the reason I said this is the follow-up to the one-two punch combo video, is because it is always the shot before that really has an impact. And here's what I mean. You know, oftentimes we see highlights of matches and you see the person ripping this wicked cross court nick. Well, what allowed them to create the opportunity to hit that winning cross court nick? It was more than likely the shot before, which is probably a tight length into the back of the court. Or maybe it's a tight drop shot that they played where they squeezed the opponent that forced the loose ball, allowing the winner. So always look at the shot before the finishing shot to see what actually allowed the player to get that opportunity and put the ball away in the fancy, amazing way that they did. So some coaching notes related to the three shot combination. It is simple, it's a simple idea, but it is not easy. So it takes a lot of practice and the thing is, and this is my note at the bottom, that your fundamentals create options. And what I mean by that is if you don't have tight fundamentals, so you don't hit consistent, accurate, tight length into the back of the court, you will not get as many of those loose ball openings and opportunities to practice a one-two punch combo or to just try to hit a winner. Now, obviously, depending on your level, if you're at a lower level, you will get more loose balls relative to someone who's at a higher level. But the higher in level you get, you typically don't just get loose balls out of the blue. You usually have to earn and create the opportunities to generate a loose ball. And then you can practice a winner or a combination like the one, two punch combo. So fundamentals create options. Now, some factors to consider. Number one, your technique is gonna play a big part in this. So how quickly you're getting your racket prepared, whether you have appropriate rotation on your backswing, whether your spacing is correct relative to the ball, neither cramping or being too far away and then being off balance, your split step will, and your movement timing will affect the energy that goes into your shot. It'll affect so many other factors. And, and there are many more technical factors that come into play when it comes to fundamentals, when it comes to executing any shot and thus any combination. So now the plug for any of you guys that are super, super keen, and I know there are a bunch of you because I've been working with several of you, send me an email at aha.arperformance.com and let's see if we can figure out how to take your game to the next level. It has been extremely successful with a handful of people from around the world where I've been doing these video analyses on mental, physical, technical, and tactical aspects of their games. I create a detailed report. We meet live on Zoom together for a coaching call. We go through all of the drills, the physical exercises, the technical changes, mental processes, routines, etc., that one can implement after ranking them low-hanging fruit first. So if it's something that you're interested in, send me an email at aha.arperformance.com and let's chat about how I can help you take your game to the next level. Now getting to the accuracy and timing of your shots, a lot of people have a tendency to maybe hit a good length and then we over anticipate the loose ball that the opponent's gonna hit. And as a result, they commit to a particular shot well before they have had the opportunity to process whether that shot is actually loose enough to attack. So if your accuracy is not good enough, that's obviously gonna throw the three shot combination off. 
if the timing is inappropriate, meaning you do not respect and reset your opponent's shot, and I'll link to that if you want to understand what that is as well, if you hit a good length, your opponent hits a really good defensive shot, but you've already committed, like I said, and you go in and try to volley drop it, the ball is glued to the wall, you hit the tin. That is attacking at the wrong time. That is not respecting and resetting. If the opponent hits a ball that's slightly faster than what you expected, and now you're suddenly late on the ball, you're not going to be able to execute it effectively, so you need to change your shot. You can't commit that hard that early. If the opponent hits a ball that's a bit loose, but it actually ends up being too loose and it comes right at your body. doesn't matter if it's loose. If you're out of position, you're not in an attacking position anymore. And that's when you need to reset the ball. So all of these things are factors that you have to keep in mind when you're practicing this three-shot combination. And an important point, this is point number three, loose is relative to your standard. So if you ask Rami Ashur what's loose, he'll say something that's two floorboards off the sidewall that's loose, he's gonna attack maybe one floorboard, maybe even glued to the side wall, I don't know. For me, something that's loose, depend and then this is the other thing, it depends on your situation and your position in the court and where your strengths and weaknesses are. So let's just say I love hitting the backhand volley drop. For me, a loose backhand might be there and I can volley drop that. For my, let, I'm just making this up, let's say my forehand is weaker and I'm not that comfortable, my forehand volley drop, this might be loose compared to this on my back end. So it's everything is relative, not only player to player, but relative to your skill in different parts of the court and different shots that you need to execute. So this is also an opportunity for you to reflect on your own game and say, where am I comfortable? Where am I not comfortable? Wherever you are not comfortable, you probably wanna work on that deficit while obviously maintaining your strength. You wanna work on that deficit so that you can create more options in the court. Okay, enough chatting, let's get to the clip. So I'm gonna show you a clip, this is, here we go, Elias and Cole, the recent final of the Qatar Classic. And you're checking out the combination right there, and I'm gonna show you in slow motion. Check out that replay again if you got distracted because I was talking. <laughs> but here you get to see in slow motion, and I'm gonna break down the different steps that we discussed a few moments ago. So here we have Elias playing that cross-court lob, Cole, cuts it off before the back wall because he knew he would get stuck if he waited and what does he do step one he hits that deep tight length so look at that target bouncing right behind at the back of the service box and the ball is angling into the side wall and you can see the shadow of the ball against the side wall it's pretty low Elias has to get down and notice Elias is hitting the ball and Paul Cole has pushed up for the volley and he's getting ready to hunt this ball now there he is, higher tee position, getting on the volley. Elias hits, uses nice height to try and defend that ball, but this ball again, relative to Cole's standards on the volley drop, is fairly loose. Now, I want you guys, especially when you try this the first time around, to just focus on the simple shot. So play the obvious shot. In this case, Cole is going for the straight volley drop to try to squeeze him, especially because the ball is loose for him. Now, if I said, as I noted before, if Elias's defense was too good, Cole might look for the volley drop, but then he has to respect and reset by saying, I can't attack that ball because it's too tight. So either I push it back and wait for a better opportunity. So you reset or rally the length, or he might even, if it's glued where he was going to volley, then he might have to let it bounce and push back and then hit it before the back glass. So now in this case, oh, and then the advanced part that I noted here, break the pattern, would be if Cole has already played that straight drop several times, Elias will be moving towards the front right because that's the shot that has now been imprinted in his brain. So after you do that several times, Cole may choose to hit, show the straight, and then hit the cross court drop. And then Elias would be moving to the front right and the ball would be going to the front left. So, but again, that's phase two, that's the advanced version. Don't try that right away. Set the pattern first and practice the obvious pattern first, and then you can change the pattern. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Now if we keep going, Cole plays that drop. He's looking, notice he didn't play it super high, and I'll show you this again. When Cole played that ball, oh, I need to go even further back. So notice when he plays this ball, there it is on the front wall. You know, a good, if the tin is 17 inches, that seems about the same height as the tin, so it's at least a foot, close to a foot and a half above the tin. That tells you he's going for 
that safety, there's a huge margin for error, but look how tight that ball is to the side wall. So his entire goal there is to keep it nice and tight, squeeze Elias over there, and then see Cole is pushing forward, and he's gonna start and see he's automatically moving to the left because he knows that Elias' shot option from there is most likely a cross. Cole starts moving to the left, hunting the weak cross, and right on Cole's racket. And then the obvious shot here is hitting to the open space, back left corner, diagonal moving for Ilyas. If you can actually hit that cross court target, accurately get that ball fading into the back corner, it will be an outright winner. Worst case scenario, you have your opponent doing work if you miss the target at the back. And then obviously, like I said, again, advanced, don't do this up front. Once you've worked this pattern a few times, you have the choice now of changing the pattern, maybe playing a straight drop or a cross court drive across the opponent because they're already going to be moving to the back left. Now the ball will be going to the right side. You have various options you could use that would break their momentum and their patterns. But step one, please do this. Let's practice the obvious shot, create the pattern in your opponent's mind, do it a few times and then break the pattern. So now you see Cole go over here, hitting into the open court. See, he, so this is another mistake that people make. Did you notice how high he played that ball? So when Cole played this draw, the drive, watch this. So the ball is hitting the front wall almost at the service line, a bit below the service line. He didn't try to hit it super, super hard. A lot of people get into these opportunities, they get overly excited and they try to hit the ball really, really hard and that totally throws the accuracy off and it prevents the ball from fading into the back corner. Unless you are one of the top 10 players in the world and watching this, maybe you have enough control to hit it really hard and get it to fade consistently. But for most players, you need to take a bit of pace off. You need to aim at a decent height on the front wall like he has over here, and you want to find that target in the back. So you see he gets that. On the, that's where he hits it on the front wall. And then the first bounce is here behind the back of the service box. And the ball is dead in the back and what is the reward look at that fist pump that's your reward you win the point outright when you find that target accurately so ladies and gentlemen i wanted to try my best to keep this short and sweet and very impactful for you i hope you take a lot away from the power of fundamentals the possibility of reducing pace to find your targets effectively playing the simple shot and hitting to the open space it if you can put those pieces together even without breaking the pattern, even without using excessive deception, you will be winning more points and or you will be putting more work into your opponent's legs. So I hope you take this to heart. I hope that you go and practice this as always. And as I mentioned before, like the video if you actually like it, leave a comment, tell me what you thought of it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and please share it with at least one friend who would appreciate and enjoy this. Thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next video.